Hey, what's up everyone? Well, I'm back and it's time to get to a long overdue update. So let's get to it. So like the opening said, it's time to get to an update that's long overdue. But before I do, for those of you who uh, follow me on uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, you already know that I was in the hospital for a short time. Um, that's the reason why uh, this update and this episode has been delayed. I am okay, everything's fine. Um, just things that I have to do as far as changing certain aspects of the way I do things. So um, now the videos will be back on schedule. And speaking of schedule, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be picking a day during the week. Most likely, I would say it's either gonna be a Sunday or a Monday episode. That's the day that the main episode for the channel is gonna come out. So if you are a subscriber, make sure you hit the bell and be alerted. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button and, and hit the little bell next to it so this way you get notified when the episodes come out. So with that being said, let's go to the tank and see what has happened over the last week and a half or so since I actually looked at the tank. Okay, so on this update, we're gonna start in on the reef tower itself, uh, the drain tower that is. Um, here you can see the purple digi, the red digi in the background right there. And also the red setosa is just showing a little piece up by the top of the purple digi. They're encrusting really, really awesomely on this tower and I'm, I'm really super impressed about how that part of the tower is looking. And just going downward, you could see how much the Hollywood Stunner has grown. Uh, it's starting to get a real, a lot of character to it. And also the bottom plate as well is not growing as much because I guess the shading, um, but it is growing. So super stoked about how this may turn out. Now moving across to the shelf rock, here's the night before Christmas Favia. Um, it's growing really um, a lot now that I've moved it up and it's starting to move downward more on the rock that it's on. Heading across here is the main body of Red Satosa that's really expanding a whole lot onto that rock. Uh, there is a lot of coral such as also the, the Red Montipora cap. Um, the, here's the, the Barney coral. A lot more green is showing it. It's probably because of um, where it is, there is a the center brace and it's shading that particular side of the coral. Now moving on, here is the green encrusting Monty. As you can see right here, encrusting a whole lot onto this rock. Uh, it's now from the bottom over the edge of the rock, which made me move the zoas that I had there, these Sunny D's, to the shelf in between the two pillars. They are growing really well and, and filling out, as well as the Utter Chaos is really doing well, as you can see right here. Uh, so hopefully I'll have a healthy population of those soon. There's the Purple Cat's Paw. It's gotten a, got a lot thicker in the last few, uh, few weeks, and it's amazing to see, after you don't look at your tank that much, how things have really taken off and grown. Here's the birthday cake, totally overlapped that edge now and is really growing well. Uh, here's the maize brain favia in the back and I'll try and get you, you can see right there how it's encrusted now onto the rock itself. Here's a, a wide shot of the Euphelia garden. There isn't too much to say about this other than it's really um, taken off. All the corals that are in it are basically happy and healthy. Um, and they're, they're growing out. So this set of corals, as far as Euphelia is concerned, is gonna stay here and fill out the, uh, this section of rock. Uh, I don't anticipate putting any more Euphelia in this corner, simply because I like the way it looks and uh, I wanna move in a different direction as far as uh, corals that'll add character to the reef. Now, moving down, you can see right here the jawbreaker, red jawbreaker mushrooms um, right over here. 
and I'm trying not to get this to focus on my finger, but right over here and right over here are two baby uh, red, red jawbreaker mushrooms that have come out uh, and they'll be filling out that section. So there's a lot of, a lot of improvement from them and, and hopefully this whole face of the rock one day will be filled with these mushrooms, but until then it's just patience. Now I moved one of the rainbow acans to the pagoda skeleton uh, in hope it will fill out the dead section. Uh, it's doing quite well. It's kind of retracted right now because it was on the sand bed near the glass and when I cleaned it, I, I disturbed it. Uh, here's the orange rainbow. Of course, the candy cane's getting bigger and better than ever. Now moving over to the main group of eight cans, you can see everything's doing really well. The, this group right here, um, you can scroll, go back in some of the videos and see how very tiny they were. Now they've totally overgrown that corner of the square plug that they're on and they're getting bigger and I'm really happy about that because it shows a little pink uh, version and variety of the eight cans and just how colorful they can be. As well as these orange ones that were really micros when I got them. But now they're filling out and they've, they've filled out this whole plug, which is about the size of a half dollar. So that, that plug will tell you just how much they've grown. And Blastos are doing really good. As you can see, the neon green Fabia has split and now has two eyes in the back. Fungia plate is doing well. This main part of the zoanthid garden is, is doing fine. Um, not much change in that. The rastas in the back are growing and uh, I'm really happy about this section. The shaded area is a bit slow, but I'm not really concerned about that because some of those always are not really the ones that I really am thrilled over. The little button polyp is still hanging in there and growing strong as well as the Bauer Banky A-can in the back. The purple and green candy canes, you can see this is the one downfall right now. Uh, I lost a head when I was in the hospital. So um, that is my fault because when I left just prior to going in the hospital, I forgot to turn my auto top off unit back on. And over the three days, the tank wasn't getting uh, replenished with calc and, and, and fresh auto top off. But uh, it's just confined to that one head and the other ones are, are bouncing back. And finally, here's the showpiece. This trachea is getting ridiculously big. At the height of its um, of the day, when it's really fanned out, it'll take up most of this corner of the tank, which is really what I wanted to do, but it's super healthy and super full of color, so I'm thrilled to death about this coral. So the, now coming up, there's gonna be some, uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take some shots of the, the tank that you may not have seen, and including some of the areas that I really want to focus in on. So uh, let's get to that. Now, as far as the main tank is concerned, everybody's doing well, everybody's happy. Um, what I want to do right now, as you can see, instead of focusing in on all the livestock, because you pretty much know exactly what I have, and they're all doing fine, is to go to a shot of the tank that I don't usually do. And it's one shot that I really, really like. And that's right here shooting down the side of the tank. So what I will do is I'll leave you with this view of the tank. And until next time, this is Scott, and I will see you soon around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. 
As always don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe.